Welcome everyone to another capsule, international relations capsule for the Shankar IAS Academy. Today our topic is the Israel Hamas conflict, which has been in progress since October 7. There was a massive surprise attack by Hamas into Israel, crossing all the uh, defense arrangements that Israel has, like the Iron Dome, etc. And on an unexpected day when the people of Israel were enjoying themselves for some cultural festival. And the attack was such that in within a day or so, they not only killed a number of Israelis, as well as took some of them as hostages. The Israeli government immediately came to action and within hours, a massive bombing started on Gaza. This has created an extremely dangerous situation. There have been wars before between the Palestinians and Israelis. There have been occasions when the entire Arab world fought wars with Israel. On all these occasions, Israel had decisive victory. As a result, which Israel, which was set up by the United Nations in 1945, sorry, 1947, uh, had become bigger. They had, in fact, uh, accumulated more territory. And the Palestinians were pushed to Gaza, a small territory with 2.3 million people, and uh, the West Bank or the Jordan River, where there is the Palestinian Authority. Of course, the United Nations had created two states, Israel as a Jewish state and Palestine as the Palestinian state. So the idea was that there would be two states, both independent and sovereign. But as it happened, Israel not only was established, but also gained strength but Palestinians were scattered. They were in any case scattered in different parts of the world. They could not come to a home, the homeland which was earmarked for them, could not be occupied because of the various conflicts that took place and Israel's uh, total rejection of the UN plan of Jerusalem being the capital of both countries and so on. And so this long history of conflict some stability has taken place in the sense that Israel became a very powerful nation and with powerful friends. And uh, Palestine is still only in the name of a Palestinian authority, which is not even a member of the United Nations, but an observer. And uh, whenever the Palestinians rose in revolt, what are called the Intifadas, twice, twice, in order to gain freedom for themselves, were completely oppressed and depressed by the Israeli government. And so the last two or three years, there has been a kind of uneasy peace in this, in this region. And what happened at that time was a gradual uh, acceptance by the Arab countries of Israel as a state. None of the Arab countries had recognized Israel. And so Israel's claim was that it was insecure even within their boundaries because these states have not recognized Israel. And therefore, they even justified their nuclear capability as something essential for their survival and protection because the Arabs were believed to have chemical weapons and other, other weapons of mass destruction. So, uh, and uh, the the first country, first uh, Arab country to normalize relations with Israel was Egypt back in 1979. That was the first country. And then several uh, is, um, in, uh, Arab countries began dealing with, you know, informally with uh, Israel and later official recognition was accorded. And the latest was, of course, UAE and Bahrain, etc. Very recently, the Abraham Accords. So the Palestine, while the Palestinians were watching helplessly without a place for themselves, without a land for themselves, they noticed that the Arab world was generally moving towards 
Israel. And uh, very important recognition, important uh, deals were made. And uh, it was believed that another deal would be made between Saudi Arabia and Israel. And, um, and the United States would guarantee it. And it was at this point that the Palestinians, particularly the extremists among them, the Hamas, thought that the time had come to bring the Palestinian issue back to the forefront. Because nobody was talking about Palestine at any of these meetings. Israel had very deep relationship with UAE. UAE even changed the holiday, the weekly holiday to uh, Sunday, with respect to make foreigners feel more comfortable in their country. And uh, big deals were made. There was, in fact, a, a, a second quad, the Middle East quad with India, Israel, UAE, and the uh, United States. So very dramatic changes took place in this. And all this Palestine was watching as to whether anybody was there to support them or raise their issue. Iran was probably the only country which stood steadfast. But even Iran started doing various things like bringing uh, Saudi Arabia and Israel close to each other. And uh, so there was this very uh, possibility, very important possibility of an agreement between Israel and Saudi Arabia, and which would be guaranteed by the United States. So it is possible that the Hamas and the other Palestinians perhaps felt that this should be stopped. Otherwise, history will be reversed, and the Palestinian idea itself will disappear from the face of the earth. This may have been a provocation. This is the feeling. But they had prepared themselves for a long time. They had armed themselves possibly with Iranian arms, and also, uh, you know, slowly crept into Israeli territory, and this massive attack took place. So it is true that they brought the, um, the, the agenda back to the forefront, and the Arabs had to look at themselves once again as to see whether they were doing the right thing for the Palestinians. But what faced the world was a very, very intense warfare in um, in Gaza. Uh, the Israelis, with all their might, uh, bombed Gaza for long, for several days, and then they penetrated and bombed vital locations. They had no water, electricity. A first-class humanitarian situation came up. More than ten thousand Palestinians were killed, and many of them taken hostage. And the Israelis were also taken hostage on the first two days. And uh, the war continued mercilessly after that. And there was no sign of any kind of ceasefire. Uh, United Nations made some feeble attempts. Secretary General asked for a ceasefire. Others asked for a ceasefire. But neither the friends of Israel nor the friends of Palestinians were willing to have a, a ceasefire because they felt that a ceasefire would give Israel an upper hand, having occupied a lot of territories. They would stabilize them further, and therefore, even the Palestinians, the Hamas, were not willing to have a ceasefire. So the Security Council met several times. Several proposals were examined. And the first instinct for the whole world was to ask for a ceasefire. But even that became impossible because Israel said that our idea is to finish off Hamas. Even today, that is what they say, that whatever else may happen, this war will not end till Hamas lays down its arms and disappear as a force or Palestinian force in that territory. So, so many, many attempts were made. There was no agreement for a, for a ceasefire even, not to speak of the rest. The whole proposal for a two-state solution was forgotten by most people. Israel said that our objective is to clear uh, Gaza of Hamas and also push the, the uh, Palestinians who are living there, about 2.3 million people, down to the south of Gaza and, if possible, to the West Bank. Of course, the idea was that this should not happen. The Israelis felt very much uh, in, uh, insecure 
and they argued that this was the only way uh, to solve the problem. No second state and uh, elimination of Palestinian or at least their extremist wing. But today is a, uh, a hopeful day uh, because, in fact, an agreement was reached uh, between Hamas and Israel to have a humanitarian pause, as it were. It is not a ceasefire as yet, but humanitarian uh, pause in the sense that war will stop for a while, for a specific period of time, three days, four days, to allow humanitarian material to enter Gaza from Egypt or from any other source. And also the people to be, the wounded had to be uh, you know, treated and the dead bodies had to be uh, cremated and all this to allow all these humanitarian things to happen, Israel has finally agreed for a short pause uh, in, uh, in the war. Uh, so that, uh, and this was basically uh, brokered by Qatar, Qatar, who is for good relations with uh, um, Israel as well as uh, Palestinians. And of course, Egyptians were also there. And everybody was trying to do what they can to stop the war whatever may be the future like. So now there is an agreement to uphold a brief ceasefire in Gaza to allow for the release of 50 hostages during the, which were taken, that is Israelis during the Hamas assault, and release of about 150 Palestinians held uh, prisoners in Israel. So this is the immediate solution. Because for Israel, the most serious consequence of the Hamas attack was the uh, hostages taken by uh, Hamas. And uh, Israel was not sure where they were, whether they were secure, or where they had been killed. And all the speculation was there. The focus was very much on getting the prisoners out, that is, the hostages out. And that is where there was a start of a discussion among all of them. So the start was indicated at least for four days. And the humanitarian pause would be called and allow for more aid to go to the uh, for civilians. And uh, on the Palestinian side, there were 200 boys who were in detention as of uh, this week. And uh, 75 women and some teenage girls also were involved. And for them also, to get it back the hostages of the prisoners was uh, important important objective. And all this is possible because of a resolution which was adopted by the Security Council. The one and resolution which was adopted without any veto was a Maltese resolution. Maltese, Maltese as, Malta, as you know, is a, is a small European country and they are non-permanent members of the Security Council. And uh, among the many efforts that many countries made Malta happened to be lucky enough uh, to have a very extensive consultations with all of them. And they uh, uh, pointed out, uh, they fixed, the, uh, fixed their attention on the hostage issue and humanitarian supply. And these are things that nobody can question, like motherhood. Uh, who can question that uh, hostages should be released? Who can question that humanitarian basis should go? So whatever may be the political objective of either of the two countries, it was important for war to stop. But the word ceasefire was not acceptable to uh, United States, was not acceptable to UK and uh, other friends of uh, Israel. And therefore, the way the Maltese went about getting support for their resolution must have been very hard negotiations. But also since it is Malta, which is which is a small country which does not have a particular agenda rather than peace, that may have helped. So in any case, quite unexpectedly on the 15th of uh, November, we had a resolution. Uh, of course, the United States could have vetoed it. Britain could have vetoed it. <coughs> but uh, they did not do that. And because they had also great interest in the hostages, and uh, they thought that uh, releasing some of the Palestinians may not do any harm to their own national interests. 
but without giving up their ultimate objective of defeating Hamas and eliminating them, making them, uh, you know, surrender all their arms and then uh, recognize uh, Israel as the only authority in that region, uh, they would continue to fight. And that they continue to maintain that uh, this, in spite of this, if there is any kind of uh, problem uh, of uh, intensification of war, all this would be would be cancelled. And one of the most serious thing that happens, the things that happened was the Al Shifa Hospital, the only hospital in uh, in Gaza, uh, was attacked directly by the Israeli army on foot as well as from air. And um, of course, the argument given by Israel was that. Uh, uh, this was being used by Hamas as a military command station. There were uh, tunnels under the hospital. And these are all claims of uh, Israel, we don't know. Uh, but they claim that there were tunnels or communication centers, there were probably even hostages, Israeli hostages there. And therefore, they directly attacked Al Shifa Hospital and virtually destroyed it. That means throwing the wounded and the, and the dead out into the open without any, any hope. And so, uh, what happened in the debate uh, regarding the uh, Maltese resolution was very interesting because uh, people explained their positions in a very uh, uh, explicit manner because everybody understood that uh, this was very essential that this should uh, happen. And um, so, the in a sense, we can say that tiny Malta has gone down in history as a ray of hope for humanity when it managed to persuade the members of the United Nations Security Council to stress humanitarian principles. They expressed, they mentioned the, the principles like as humanity, impartiality, neutrality, independence, and the obligation to respect and protect humanitarian relief personnel. So these are principles which nobody could question. And they are like motherhood, rarely challenged by anyone. But nations who are members of the Security Council, particularly the permanent members, considered these them, in, them dispensable when there is a challenge like this. So, and the, it was Malta, with the support of others, which who brought out these principles, which were unchallenged. So, but there were the the big powers were insensitive to this massive tragedy. And uh, neither in Russia and Ukraine war or in the Gaza-Israel war, any of these principles were observed. And so this adoption of this resolution in favor of an extended humanitarian pause and, and corridors throughout Gaza was a small little lamp lit by the Maltese. And uh, three uh, permanent members abstained from the resolution. Uh, in the original uh, charter, if you read, uh, it specifies that any resolution to pass, it must have the positive uh, approval, positive vote of all the five permanent members. But over the years, this has been somewhat uh, diluted. And uh, so strictly speaking, uh, the an abstention should not be a support, should not be treated as a support. But somehow there has been an agreement over the years that if a uh, a permanent member abstained on a resolution that would be treated as a positive vote by by experience. So for this for a result of that, even though three permanent members did not support the resolution, three for three different reasons, and uh, the council might move towards action or indicate them. So from 15th onwards, this gained momentum. And that is what we are seeing today as some kind of an agreement based between them. So certainly the negotiations took, which took place in the Security Council on the Malta resolution gave an opportunity for uh, a resolution to be adopted. So in the preambular paragraphs of the resolution, a careful selection of accepted language in the UN Charter and elsewhere were put together and But one could see that uh, it was very important not to pick any word 
or uh, or phrase which would uh, cause any concern for the others. Uh, but it is clear that the eventual outcome made, as they say, in the United Nations equally unhappy. Everyone equally becomes unhappy, and that is when a consensus is is reached. So the categorical rejection of forced displacement of the civilian population, including children in violation of humanitarian law, must have been painful for Israel. But it is balanced by an unequivocal demand for immediate and unconditional release of all hostages held by Hamas. So these are the main points in the Maltese resolution. But nothing good happened even after the resolution was adopted. It was clear that there was an opening there and the humanitarian efforts, but the resolution identifies the action required without anyone making concessions that affect their national uh, policies. So the, it, it became clear to everybody that uh, killing by itself is of no interest unless they give the warring factions some tactical advantages. It is clear that Israel is on a revenge drive, which only adds to the bitterness. On the other hand, cessation of hostilities under any pretext will eventually end conflict. And that is a good principle. So the Maltese resolution envisages a win-win situation for both sides, which the two parties fail to see in their mood to bring each other to book. Punishment is the, is the slogan of Israel. They don't say call it revenge, but it was revenge. There were no more to discuss these efforts, and uh, their objective was very clear. But this resolution brought the brought the kind of uh, under, understanding or need for peace into open air. And the considering the voting pattern and the statements made, it is obvious that the Maltese delegation engaged all the members of Security Council individually as there was no P5 position. Sometimes on such some issues, all the P5 think alike. No non-aligned movement position also because the non-aligned caucus in the Security Council was also di divided. And therefore, since there was no group protection for any, any country, and uh, countries were operating fairly independently, so they were able to, Malta was able to accomplish this feat of a resolution without even the threat of a veto. So that is a, an important point. Uh, the fact that Malta was a small country which had no axe to grind may also have been a factor in its success. But curiously, uh, an oral amendment was made by the Russian delegation after the resolution was put forward, which it describes as the lowest common denominator, lower than what the council cannot allow. And the amendment was to add a reference to paragraph one of a General Assembly resolution referring to, in inverted commas, illegal Israeli actions in occupied Palestinian territories. So after the resolution was tabled in the Security Council, uh, Russia did not even put in a written amendment. So obviously they were not very serious about it. They were just going on record to say that, um, uh, you know, the illegal Israeli actions in occupied territory should not be. And on that pretext, Russia abstained. They did not vote for the resolution. So the oral amendment was defeated by a vote of five in favor, one against, and nine abstentions. Most of the, uh, the countries, the non-aligned countries and uh, neutral countries, obviously, they all support abstained. And uh, only five countries supported it and that was uh, rejected and so the when the vote was the uh, the resolution was put to a vote the result was 12 in favor to none against and that was a significant achievement and there were three abstentions russia uk usa all giving different reasons for them not to have supported it they said that they would not accept anything that would jeopardize the security of uh, Israel, and uh, therefore they could not support it. At the same time, they did not want to veto it uh, because no resolution was possible if there was any veto. 
So the U.S. said after their vote that it did not vote against the resolution because it worked with others to adopt a resolution on the war situation. So they realized the shame that Security Council is facing that they are not able to take any action. So in a sense, it is the Security Council itself that suggested this, uh, this pause, and then it was picked up by the countries concerned. And today we have a situation where there is possibility of a ceasefire, and, uh, it, and, and, uh, and also possibly a, a ceasefire situation. But US, U.S. also said that it was horrified that a few council members cannot bring themselves to condemn the terrorist attacks that Hamas carried out against Israel on October 7. The U.S. U.K. also highlighted the demand for release of the hostages by Hamas. So the Russian delegate remarked that humanitarian forces are not and cannot be a replacement for a ceasefire or even a truce. So they also did not... Uh, uh, support the resolution. China remarked that Council should have adopted a more comprehensive and more robust resolution much earlier. The they said that the reason why it did not happen was the obstructionist attitude of the United States. So China characterized the adopted resolution as a first step towards a ceasefire, averting even a greater catastrophe. The observer of the state, the Palestinian state, naturally regretted that the D UN did not ask for a stop to the killing, particularly civilians, including women and children. They said that the Israeli narrative of killing should not prevail. And he said there is an alternative reality in which Palestinians are free and no Palestinian and no Israeli is free. It is time for it to prevail. It is time for peace. This is what Palestine said. Israel, of course, naturally stated that no resolution which did not restrain Hamas would create peace. And finally, Israel said, should Hamas choose to lay down their arms, turn themselves in, and hands over the hostages unscathed, this war would end immediately. So Israel has three conditions. The Hamas should lay down their arms, the war should end, turn themselves in to be arrested, taken over by Israelis, and hands over the hostages without danger to them, then only this war would end. So the Security Council meeting did not end in any, any hope that anything will happen. But obviously, the negotiations that took place in the Security Council was reflecting a new mood of exasperation around the whole world that this would lead to very, many serious consequences. So that became urgent and therefore neither Palestine nor Israel should could resist it. And that is, a, that is the uh, reaction that we are seeing today. And we should give credit to Morta for having produced uh, this resolution. But this, does, this is not a, not a happy ending as yet. Many things are yet to be sorted out. In the meantime, there are things spreading out, out like a, in a, in a red, red Sea hijacking of a, of a ship by the Houthi, Houthi, Houthis in Yemen. There's another escalation of the, of the war. So in any case, today we can, be, we can feel somewhat comforted by the fact that the beginning of peace has started and that certainly it's because of the an intervention of countries like uh, Qatar and also China has been taking a major effort to bring about peace. China was approached by Iran and uh, China has made such statements that uh, this must end. So on the whole, there is some peace in the horizon, but killing has not stopped any, any moment. It could fire up again, uh, but uh, the kind of situation that remained before the 15th of November has changed and there is some hope and also some resurrection of the Security Council. You know, major issues like Russia playing war or the pandemic or 9-11, Security Council could not do anything. Terrorism is still around. But now the Security Council was able to at least to make a feeble effort 
And that, I think, will give the Security Council a certain amount of comfort. So that is the situation today. It can turn in any direction tomorrow. But today is indeed a happy day for us to think that there is some hope for the matter. India's stand is very clear. They are supporters. We are, of course, support, uh, support in support for peace and uh, against terrorism. Our problem basically is terrorism by Hamas because we cannot accept, India cannot accept any success to terrorists. It is in our own interest and for the interest of the world. So that was our main concern. And secondly, we are supportive of Israel uh, because of the big tragedy that took place unexpectedly and they were in grief and we supported them in that sense also. But as far as peacemaking concerned, we are all always supportive of those, both the two sides. If they are willing to come to an agreement, India would be very happy. And India must be working behind the scenes to persuade these countries to, uh, these countries to somehow stop the war and start negotiations for a, a two state solution. That is the most important thing. And we support the two-state solution. Both Israel and Palestine should be independent states, secure within their boundaries, without any uh, terrorist or armed aggression. So that is our position. And uh, India's position has not changed. It has been reiterated that uh, we cannot uh, condone what Hamas has done. At the same time, they would like peace to come. Yes, that is the only problem. That is the issue. Because the Israelis feel that uh, their security will be threatened if there is a Palestinian state next to their uh, um, next to their borders, around their borders. And uh, they would like to control the situation by keeping his, the Palestinians under their control, like open prisons. Because Gaza is not an independent territory. Gaza is Israeli territory. They are in occupation. And the Palestinians were simply allowed to uh, exist there. They didn't have total freedom. They could not administer themselves. The Palestinian authorities sitting in the, on the West Bank. And they also have any political power. And they were just continuing the effort to have the two, two state solutions. The United States has accepted it. But they don't have the courage to push it down the throats of Israelis. They want Israel to somehow come to the understanding and then accept. And when the Israelis shifted their capital, Jerusalem, from Tel Aviv, Jerusalem is supposed to be shared by all the faiths, the three faiths in that region. And, um, and that was violated when Israel went and uh, declared itself, declared Jerusalem as the, as the capital. This happened during President Trump's time. So that means they have no intention to allow uh, two states. Though the United States itself, which is the greatest supporter of Israel, is inclined towards a uh, towards a two-state solution. Uh, but the condition is that Hamas should lay down their arms and uh, you know maintain peace, and then they will consider or think about these issues. These are the ironies of history. One situation doesn't apply equally to the other situations. So it is quite possible that uh, people have two different positions on two different issues. Naturally, it will. Palestinians will not be happy that India is not totally neutral in this situation. In fact, India was totally supportive of Palestine in all these years. When I was at the UN, for many years, we were the strongest support of uh, Palestinians. In fact, we used to speak very harshly to the Security Council and others. And at the same time, we worked behind the scenes to bring the Palestinians and Israelis together. All this we did over the years. But uh, we moved after the end of the Cold War when we established diplomatic relations. Not diplomatic relations we always have. But when we put up and we set up a mission in Tel Aviv, not Jerusalem, mind you. So in Tel Aviv, we have a, an embassy. And uh, as a result of that, we have to be more attentive to the Israeli needs. 
and also the Middle East squad, if we are members of, then, uh, you know, when there are understandings between uh, the United States, Israel, and UAE, which is also an important factor. So our relationship with us has improved, and uh, we they supply arms to us while we are not getting as many arms from Russia. Uh, we need uh, weapons of various kinds which we are getting from Israel. And therefore, our relationship with Israel is somewhat different from what it was before. But on the question of Palestine as a state, we have not changed our position. We recognize Israel as a state, not just as an observer. And uh, we, Arafat was declared a head of state as far as India was concerned. Yes, the West Bank is also not independent. It is close to Jordan. Therefore, Israel keeps saying that Jordan is Palestine. You know, as though uh, on the West Bank itself there is no uh, place for for Palestine. They want Palestine to be merged with Jordan. And of course, Jordan resists that. Jordan doesn't consider itself to be uh, Palestine. So. Though it is, it is comparatively peaceful because of the Palestinian Authority has no fighting no mandate. And uh, therefore, they are uh, still uh, are trying to uh, make a living, keep uh, the movement, Palestinian open, have discussions with countries because they have a status and they occupy the position of the observer of Palestine in the, in the United Nations. So all these reasons, um, they, they are peaceful there. But uh, if everybody is pushed there and uh, Israel attacks West Bank, which is possible, then the situation will change there also. Yes, back, Israelis are embarrassed more than anybody else. Because of the uh, peace being built between Israel and the Arab countries, uh, Israel was feeling somewhat relaxed about their security, I suppose. So they are about to sign an agreement with, uh, with, uh, with Saudi Arabia and the United States. So possibly there was a certain amount of, uh, how shall we say, a sense of security in Israel. That could be one reason. The other could be that uh, they managed this so well that they were able to escape. And who helped them in this is an issue which nobody is able to answer. Uh, people suspect that it was Iran. It equipped them so much, so many missiles and so many other things. And also, of course, when somebody is willing to kill himself, then he can penetrate anywhere. And that is something, a principle which we've been seen in the world. How many highly protected the personalities have been assassinated by some uh, trick or the other. So if people are willing to die for it, it's not possible to uh, create havoc because he will have to die, but then he would think that history will uh, um, you know, understand his action. Um, so that is what would have happened. And uh, so nobody is uh, uh, totally safe from all these uh, possibilities. So, and there is a failure of intelligence. There is a failure of uh, equipment. There's a failure of people. It was a celebratory occasion. People were enjoying music and so on. That was when they, when they hit. So obviously they had planned it uh, for, for a long time, equipped themselves for that and attacked. So Israel had to now review their security. They had to see whether the iron um, you know, shield was really effective, at least for once. Because that is because they were able to penetrate inside the shield. They could not have bombed from outside. And that is why they managed to get through and create havoc with Israelis never expected. So we have to look out for what happens next. There are so many strands which have to be tied up if we have any peace. And the Israeli statement, the Security Council was absolutely clear as to what will bring peace. Nothing other than the total elimination of one. So how are they going to accomplish it? It's not going to be so easy.
So more bloodshed will follow that. That's all. They will uh, come to their senses and uh, realize the importance of peace. Because without that, nobody can focus. And the world has enough conflict. The Russia Ukraine war is still going on with serious consequences for the entire world. And even this will have that kind of consequence because there's also in an oil rich region and uh, anything can happen. So let's hope it settles sooner than later. And uh, the two state policy is probably the only answer. And let's hope both sides will come towards it. And there, the key player is the United States. And I should finally say to Israel that this is a reality that enters. Okay, shall we close then? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you very much. See you again later. Thank you.